So we're gonna talk about uh, Security Monkey, which is an open source tool for monitoring your AWS deployment. AWS is the Amazon Web Services. This is the, the cloud. Um, I am not a vendor, so I'm not going to push you to try to install this. There's other tools. I'm gonna to talk about them quite a bit and talk about their strengths. Um, if I'm nervous, it's because you're all looking at me. Please look back down at your laptop screen, something that'll be a lot better. So a little bit about me, uh, I work at Netflix. Uh, I am a security operations engineer, so I think uh, the vast majority of my time is dealing with operations requests. Those are requests to sync IAM roles across accounts, to do security group modifications, uh, to help uh, uh, with uh, VPC setups and things like that. Uh, but that does leave uh, maybe uh, about 20% of my time uh, to uh, work on code to automate this work. And so I am the maintainer for Security Monkey. Um, and uh, I've been a contributor to Sleepy Puppy, which is another uh, tool that we open sourced. Sleepy Puppy is for delayed cross-site scripting detection, and I think uh, it's kind of generous to say I'm a contributor. I'm more like a cheerleader. It's uh, Scott Barron's project. Um, he is an, an excellent engineer, and that's really his baby. Um, a little bit about um, uh, Netflix here. Um, we have dozens of accounts. Um, and we have to monitor all of them. And we also are an active, active company. And so when Amazon has difficulties in one region, we can fail over to a, a different region. Um, and I think monitoring and managing that uh, deployment uh, with just the Amazon console can be quite difficult. Um, because uh, uh, I think when you log into the console, you're logging into a specific account. You then have to choose a technology and a region. And so it's difficult to see what's going on everywhere at once. And so this is a big reason, this is my favorite part about Security Monkey. So talking about the cloud, um, why it's different, um, you can go on and on about the, the, the description of the cloud. Uh, NIST has a definition. The most important thing to me is that it's self-service. Um, and this has implications uh, that uh, the security team needs to not be in the way of your developers. They need to have access to just deploy instances, bring up ELBs, everything like that. Um, I think Jason Chan has a talk that's famous. It's uh, um, guardrails, not gates, uh, or from gates to guardrails. And it's so um, engineers don't have to come to the security team to request permission for things. Uh, they simply kind of go about their work, and we try to keep them from doing things that are bad. The self-checkout model here is uh, very similar. For the most part, you can go through self-checkout. You can do everything yourself. If you're trying to buy alcohol or tobacco, uh, maybe you, you shouldn't be allowed to do that self-checkout, at least not in California. And so you have to go through and actually uh, then engage the security team. Um, that's Kevin. Uh, he's the kid there. He's just uh, the um, that uh, he's not allowed to to purchase tobacco, so he should put that back. Uh, his uh, picture is in here because he has a talk after lunch uh, on Lemur, which is our PKI infrastructure um, and automation. Um, but I think the big thing here is self-service, and that defines quite a bit about how all of our tools work. So Security Monkey, uh, as I said, it can monitor multiple Amazon accounts. Um, I think we're up to a couple dozen. Uh, there are some companies that have thousands of Amazon accounts. Um, it does not scale up to that currently. Uh, but I think if you have a reasonable deployment, uh, uh, Security Monkey uh, does in its current state scale up to that. It'll tell you what's changing. And that's great for a dashboard. If you're on call, if you have a TV up somewhere, you can monitor and see what's changing uh, in all of your accounts, all the technologies, and all your regions from one place. Um, and that's pretty cool. You can go back in time and see what something used to look like, and that's the historical context. And that's very similar to uh, an Amazon service that was recently announced called AWS Config. Um, and as that service uh, matures, I think we'll try to uh, integrate that as well. It does some checking uh, for uh, looking for security problems in your configurations as well. And this is really where most of the other tools in the space where they focus is one uh, a snapshot in time um, auditing of the configuration, and it's something that Security Monkey is also always doing. Uh, it'll look at, uh, it says uh, deficient SSL and TLS certs here. It's really also looking at your uh, ELB, ELB um, listener policies, so that's protocols, uh, that's where the actual ciphers are, and so it has some checks there. You should really be on one of the later um, ELB reference policies from Amazon, unless you have specific business requirements to support devices that, that those don't. So in addition to uh, being able to search and look at objects in different regions and accounts, you can also compare them. And so this becomes really important when you have a multi-region deployment. 
Um, and you need to make sure your security groups in US East 1 uh, are a match uh, what you have in Europe and around the world. You don't want to fail over and then realize that you have access that, that doesn't work over there. Um, the platform to discuss parts of your deployment, this is uh, basically just comments on items and those revisions. So you can put in uh, tickets or you can put point of contact information, things like that. Amazingly, in the Amazon console, there's not a place for, uh, for comments. There's not a place for discussion. Um, if you have a uh, site or IP, there's not a place to name that. Um, and so Security Monkey helps a little bit with that. It's kind of a, um, a band-aid feature until hopefully Amazon uh, releases this on the road one day. Um, and you can also back up a lot of this um, uh, to JSON. And so if you have uh, developers and they're spinning up an account and then they want to shut it down and kind of serialize it, but bring it back later, you can do that with Security Monkey. Um, it'll, it'll back up your environment. So here's the architecture. I think the, the two big things here is uh, in the cloud, we have a polling architect architecture uh, that is constantly asking Amazon for the configuration of all of your primitives. Uh, every time it sees that there's a change, it audits your policy with all those rules that we discussed and it saves them to an RDS database. Um, since not everyone uh, might have experience with cloud, RDS is Amazon's service that hosts your, um, your MySQL, your Postgres database. It's the relational database service. It just makes it very easy to have a database and they'll do the patching, the upgrading, and everything like that. The other part of the architecture is the web UI. And so we terminate on an EL ELB. That way you can have your SSL terminate on the ELB as well. And that's very important. It ties in very well with our, our Lemur um, open source project that uh, will be discussed after lunch. Um, I think the rest of this is, is uh, kind of standard for apps. Uh, Nginx serves up static content. Uh, Geounicorn is well, where all the REST API, the Python that has to talk to the database. Um, what, that's what handles that. So our tech stack, um, the server is, is Nginx and Geounicorn. It's Python. Uh, Flask is a microarchitecture uh, that has some advantages in that there's not a bunch of magic. You know kind of what's going on. I think that the negative part of Flask is that as you're uh, coming up and making one application this week, another one next week, you have to uh, constantly kind of redo everything. You, know, you have to uh, re-add your CSR protection, whereas other frameworks that are uh, kind of more uh, fully functional, uh, they'll give you all of that for free, but you have to learn that framework. And it's, it's a lot of magic, which makes it a little bit uh, more difficult to, to debug and, and understand what's going on. Um, it's using Bodo. It's actually Bodo, Bodo 3, and Bodo Core to talk to the Amazon API, so I think that's pretty standard for a lot of tools. Our ORM, that's uh, Object Relational Mapping, is SQL Alchemy, and that's basically so we don't have to write SQL queries ourselves, uh, and that's going to a Postgres uh, backend. Uh, we chose Postgres because it has a JSON column type, and uh, there was a time where we were on a NoSQL database, and that was just the easiest mapping. The web UI is uh, written in Angular. Uh, it's actually in, in Dart. Uh, and the CSS and everything is in Bootstrap. So we're going to go into a couple other tools here. I think it's uh, very important uh, to know everything that's in this uh, space and choose the tool that's right for you. Um, the columns that I've chosen here, they are um, obviously um, to show off what Security Monkey can do. But as I said, I'm not a vendor. Um, and so some of these other tools have a lot of strengths um, as well. Uh, I think most of the tools here do audit checks. I have a couple Amazon tools um, that uh, maybe that's not their focus. If there are other tools in the space that I haven't listed up here, uh, please uh, talk to me afterwards. I'd love to know about them. I think the other thing is I'd love to have any feedback if you've used these. Um, so Security Monkey, it does um, audit checks. And so those, that's when it's actually looking at configuration and telling you that uh, you've actually made it so this is available to the internet, a lot of checks like that. The configuration history, that lets you go back in time. So instead of just looking at what it looks like right now, did the security group allow access last Tuesday? And so that's pretty important. Uh, I think Security Monkey had that before AWS Config was uh, announced. And I think um, right now, AWS Config does not support every technology in every region, but they're getting there quickly. And I think once they do, we might just integrate with that. Uh, Security Monkey's advantage in looking at the history is that um, uh, you can actually, it, it provides a color-coded JSON mapping so you can see what something used to look like and what it looks like now. So it's very easy to identify the changes. And that works pretty well. Um, the change alerts, and so this is uh, uh, something that'll um, send you a notification, whether it's email or working on uh, SQS to, uh, to work with uh, more chat ops, kind of let you know when sensitive items are modified. 
And so instead of logging in and clicking a button to run a report, this is always running and it will send asynchronous notifications when something happens. And you can set that up so you get notifications whenever anything changes or just when there's issues that are identified. And the last column I thought was uh, pretty important is whether it's open source. Some of these um, are hosted and paid solutions and for some, some environments that's really what you want to go with. Um, some companies aren't very open source friendly. Uh, they would much rather uh, have a support contract. Um, and, and so it's, it's really good to know um, uh, what will work in your environment. So Trusted Advisor, uh, it's an Amazon one along with Config and CloudTrail. Uh, the other ones are a lot of open source projects and we had Evident.io at the, at the end here. Um, CloudTrail isn't necessarily in this space. It's more something that records all of your API calls. Uh, and so it's interesting in any conversation about AWS security, but it's not necessarily an auditing tool like everything else. So Trusted Advisor, um, I'm gonna explain a little bit about what it is and why it's not good enough for us. Uh, we have the Amazon logo up here because it is an Amazon provided tool. Uh, and so you can see uh, it has focusing in uh, cost optimization, performance, fault tolerance, and security is one of those four areas. And so it's not a security focused tool. And uh, if you go into the security checks, they're great. You should definitely check them out. You should look at all of them and remediate everything it finds. Uh, but it doesn't have as many checks as a lot of the third party tools. And so that's why um, it's good to, good to have, but it's good to have uh, something else as well. I think the other thing is it only runs when you click on it. And so you won't get a change, you won't get an alert when something is added to your environment that violates one of these rules. AWS Config, this is one of their newer technologies and it shows you what something used to look like, what it looks like right now. And that is uh, um, pretty incredible. I'm glad that Amazon has that now. It used to be uh, if you had an access key that was created and then it was deleted, you couldn't go back and figure out where that was from. Or you couldn't see if somebody changed a security group rule that disallowed access. Uh, and so this is, is pretty interesting. I think uh, Security Monkey has the ability to show you those, those differences, whereas Config, it's kind of look, looking at two pictures and trying to find the difference. You kind of have to switch between one and the other, but I think it'll probably get better over time as well. Uh, my notes on this slide are, why is this here? So simply because it's very important in any security conversation to talk about CloudTrail because it records all of those API calls. And we are working on things, I think, with a lot of other companies, like a lot of other vendors that are analyzing this data. Uh, it gives it the data to you in a very raw format. It's massive JSON files that are dumped into S3. And so you have to somehow extract that and, and turn that into something valuable. And there's gonna be more from, from Netflix and a lot of other vendors uh, from this technology in, in the future. Uh, if you are a consultant, this might be the tool for you. And so this is a command line tool that you run. It generates an HTML report or uh, standard out. Uh, and it gives you, for a snapshot in time, uh, a number of issues with your deployment. Uh, here, I think it shows you a uh, security group that has SSH open to the internet, uh, and as well, uh, Telnet. Uh, and so if you're going, if you're a consultant, you're going into a company, you're not gonna want to sp uh, spend the time to set up Security Monkey and having, having it run for months and months at a time, because you're only in there for a little while. This is a really great option. And it's open source, and so you can go and look at everything it's uh, checking. Uh, security Monkey, I, I definitely do. Uh, and I, uh, we all kind of, uh, I think, monitor each other. I, I'll steal some of their checks. I think that's okay, because it's open source. But it is not a dashboard. Cloudsploit is uh, newer to the field. And I'm very excited about Cloudsploit. Um, I think primarily because of their architecture. Uh, we've met their developer, we've had uh, video conferences with him, um, and he's uh, um, great, he's got great vision. Their architecture is that it's Lambda. Um, and so you don't have to have an instance running. Um, you basically just have something that kicks off these Lambda jobs, and those Lambda jobs check your environment and then provide a report for you. And it's both paid if you want it to be, and it's very inexpensive, um, or it's uh, open source and you can run it on, uh, on your own. And you don't need a server to run it, you can run it in your browser because it uses the JavaScript uh, APIs. Uh, so that's very in incredible. Uh, I would keep your, your eye on that one, but it is also very early and it doesn't have as many checks as some of the other tools do, but because it's open source, uh, we've all had discussions and we're going to be bringing it up to speed as well. So Prezi uh, uh, open sourced Red Alert and I think it was available before Security Monkey was open sourced and it has a really interesting architecture and in fact, this is the, the architecture I was hoping to choose for Security Monkey. Um, before we chose the current architecture. 
And what's interesting is that it's all based on Edit. And Edit is a Netflix open source project. And what it does is it'll query all the Amazon APIs for you. And it'll save that information. So your applications don't have to go to Amazon. They can go to Edit and get that information. And why that's important is that the Amazon APIs are all rate limited. And so if you have 20,000 hosts and they're all asking Amazon something, Amazon's going to just shut everything down and say, stop it. Uh, and so Edit is kind of that buffer. And they've worked out an architecture where they can get alerts when something changes. And they can run their own uh, audit reports. The downside to using Edit is that it doesn't monitor every technology that's important to a uh, security engineer. Um, it's uh, more focused on EC2 and things like that. It doesn't monitor when IAM role changes. Um, and so uh, I think that's why it wasn't uh, um, our solution. Um, it's great that it has alerts, and it's great that it's always running. And I love the name. Uh, some of my favorite video games were the Command and Conquer games, uh, Red Alerts and Tiberian Sun. And so I, I think that's pretty awesome. So Evident.io is uh, the big expensive uh, um, uh, uh, vendor in this space. Um, and this is a company I would love to get feedback on if, you knew, if you, anyone has used this product, what their thoughts are. Um, it looks very professional. Most of the time when you see cyber attack maps of the world, um, they're not very useful. But if you look at this, this is your AWS regions. And this is the number of issues it's identified and their severity in each region. And so this might actually be pretty useful. Uh, I think the downside is that people have provided feedback that it's pretty expensive. If you're a bank, maybe that's not an issue. Um, it is only audit checks, and so it's not, it's not uh, keeping track of uh, when things are changing, and you can't go back in time, but maybe you can rely on ADS config for that. So now that we've talked about some of the other solutions in the space, we're gonna go back to Security Monkey. I took this picture on my commute to work, I like it, it's the marine layer coming in. Security Monkey is standing there looking over the cloud. I believe one of the Coinbase uh, guys lives in the Santa Cruz Mountains. There's a coffee shop there that has Bitcoin and they, they claim that one of your guys set him up and that he's the only guy who uses it. So Security Monkey can tell you what's changing. And so if you have a dashboard, you bring this up, you click on the auto refresh button and so every 30 seconds it looks, and this is all of your accounts, all of your technologies, all of your regions in one place. And so this is probably my favorite part about it. And you can see that some of these are color coded. And so that means Security Monkey has an issue with that. With any tool that's pr trying to find security issues, there's gonna be some false alerts. Um, and there's some issues with scoring security tools. But it's better than uh, not knowing where to look. Um, and so I think here you can see there's an IAM user called Cloudsploit. I wanna push them, they look very cool. It was created, it has uh, some issues, so we should probably look at that. The next line is an Amazon policy. Um, and this is an updated screenshot. We've got another one that's a little bit later that shows some other functionality. So once you know that things are changing, um, you want to know what it changed exactly and when it changed. Um, and so here we have that JSON I was talking about. And maybe JSON isn't the best UI, um, but it's uh, very dynamic. And here we have it so it's color coded. And so you can see that this IAM user has an access key that used to be active, that's the red, that's gone away, it is now inactive. And so this is the diff view, and you can see that from the tab on the left. There's a couple other tabs, and we'll get to some of those and, and uh, why they're important. So it shows you uh, uh, when it changed, how it changed, and you can actually, there's a timeline where you can see, uh, you can go back in time to see uh, how it used to look. So here's a couple use cases. Um, if you're on call, you're gonna uh, um, be paged at some point, and when it's 2 a.m. and everyone's on a bridge, everyone's panicking, and they're saying, the firewall started blocking my traffic, and if you don't have some way to go back in time, you have no idea if that changed. Maybe it did. Um, Security Monkey can, can let you know that it used to look like this, somebody did change it or did not change it, and so you can actually focus your troubleshooting abilities on the areas that actually matter. Um, the same thing uh, for not just security groups, but also uh, S3 access. Um, and so uh, you can see if something used to have S3 access. Um, it's interesting when Amazon updates uh, managed policies. Um, they have different versions and they push them out constantly. And so Security Monkey can see when they update that. And that's one of the only IAM policies that you don't really control yourself. Amazon is controlling that. And so you might want to know when they are changing that access, because if you're providing that access to uh, a server or an instance or something, it, it might be very important for you to know that it has now expanded its access. And it has forensics value. And so if you store this database in a place that is separate from your production environment, and you do have a breach, you will have a trail of the changes that happened to your Amazon primitives during this breach. Um, 
and I think that is, is, is very good for, for tracking down um, how an attacker might move through your environment. I should define S3. This is an Amazon service for uh, simple storage. And so uh, massive amounts of files uh, are all stored uh, on S3. So a lot of policies, uh, and Coinbase talked about this a little bit in their talk, um, they use wildcards. And you don't necessarily know all the permissions that are um, included with these wildcards. And in fact, um, I've uh, been trying to put together a list of all Amazon uh, permissions, and it's very difficult to. The policy generator has quite a few of them, but not all of them. Um, and so what we try to do here is any, anytime there's a wildcard, a star, you can click on that tab, and it'll expand that out to show you all the different permissions that we know about uh, that are included in that wildcard. Um, and so I think that the EC2 describe star is a very important one to be able to um, know if somebody has access to the user data on your instances. And this is a great way to, to try to figure that out. Now, there's also the ability to minimize policies in Security Monkey. And I wish I never had to do this. I don't like having wildcards in my security policies. Uh, I really rather enumerate everything that it can do. But there are reasons that you can't. There are policy size limits in Amazon. Uh, and they're getting better over time. Um, but there's no way you'll ever be able to um, enumerate every single action on every uh, um, uh, technology type in an Amazon policy, especially if you have conditions and you're listing out resources and everything like that. And so if you have a user that has very few permissions, this is never an issue. And if you have a full admin, they just have a star, so that's never an issue. If you have power users, they're somewhere in the middle, and you might run into those policy size limits. And so you might have to minimize a little bit. In this example, we've minimized, and so you can see create log group and create log stream have been minimized to C star. And that's a lot smaller, maybe pretty cryptic. That doesn't show you what that means. Um, of course, you can click the expanded button, or when you're minimizing it, you can change the minimum number of characters from the zero to maybe six, and then you'd get create star, and that would be a little bit better. But I think I would prefer to avoid this entirely. I'd much rather have uh, um, a white list of things that somebody is allowed to do uh, than have wildcards. So there's this um, discussion. You can have comments uh, on your items and on each revision of that item as well. And here you can put uh, JIRA uh, tickets. Uh, you can put point of contact. You can put other metadata about uh, the primitives. I think uh, we're working towards having this so it'll also uh, do a callback to your chat op. So in your chat room, when somebody adds a comment or, or a justification, it'll let you know about that as well. So. What's really interesting about the Coinbase talk is they have some really uh, interesting ideas for how IAM should be done. And we do them very differently. And the cloud is at a place right now where we can have these competing views and there's not a set standard. And I find this incredibly uh, um, interesting. And so I specifically chose um, uh, this set of issues from an IAM user uh, to bring up this point. So this user has an access key. Um, and I have declared war on access keys. Um, they get checked into GitHub. When your laptop gets stolen, you, you have to figure out if somebody uh, was able to use them and remediate that and then revoke them. They never get uh, rotated. Oh, maybe you have a, a manual process to do that. Um, oftentimes, the, the owners won't rotate. You have to set up something in your calendar to constantly rotate these access keys. And so we try to avoid users wherever possible, and we use IAM roles instead. When you launch an instance into an IAM role, it retrieves its credentials from the Amazon metadata service on that instance. Amazon automatically rotates those keys every hour. They're put in your environment. They're not put in a file so they don't get checked into GitHub. Uh, you don't have to worry so much when a laptop is stolen. Um, the other permission I have here is uh, this user has access to modify security groups. And so uh, Security Monkey has a list of uh, IAM permissions uh, that uh, uh, you should flag on because they're very sensitive. Um, and I have a couple in there, but there's not a definitive list. And if somebody wants to make an open source project on GitHub that just lists out the things that are really sensitive, I'd love to see that. Uh, we're kind of adding them as we find them. I think anything that modifies security groups, or there's some RDS ones, or pass role, that's an IAM one, those are all very sensitive. Um, the security group uh, modifications are quite powerful because unlike other technologies, uh, you can oftentimes limit them by putting a resource clause in. Security groups don't have an ARN, so that gets much more difficult. We have a solution, um, but we're hoping that the, uh, at some point the Amazon policy language will allow us to restrict this uh, permission to specific security groups. Um, the other thing I want to bring up, uh, this has a score column. 
And I had a, a colleague who used to say, uh, numbers lose meaning. And it, it's true, scores are kind of silly. Here maybe a security group modification should be a seven and the access uh, key should be a one. But there are some objects that have a number of different uh, issues. I've seen um, uh, maybe they're, they're completely fine, but the uh, uh, security monkey raises 20 issues on them. And so the, the combined score is 100. And you compare that to something that has a, a score of 10. And th th you're really comparing apples and oranges. So be very hesitant to, to prioritize just by score alone. You really have to have a human uh, look at this and evaluate the risk. So whenever it raises an issue, you can justify those issues. Um, and this is what you should really do in your environment. Um, and so this, this user has an access key, and so we can go and talk to them and make sure they're doing everything properly. Um, and then it tells you who justified it, when they justified it, and their reason for justifying. And so that's pretty big. Um, so I think I'm gonna go into a few common issues that uh, we find with Security Monkey. Um, and uh, oftentimes when I talk to people, they don't realize that if you have your uh, configuration set in a certain way, uh, that uh, you might be uh, vulnerable to attack. Don't mind me. <laughs> so uh, if you allow your employees to type ciders, uh, I would advise against that. A lot of our infrastructure now disallows them to do that at all. And if they are allowed to do it, um, they, will inherit, they, they will definitely make mistakes Maybe they're not all network engineers. They're gonna put a slash zero at the end of an IP address. It's gonna be open. And so be, don't allow them to do that. Uh, Security Monkey tries to catch some of that. It'll catch really uh, large network ranges. It'll catch slash zeros, even if they're not 0.0.0.0. .0 .0 .0 .0. Um, and that's important. The other thing, if you're an EC2 classic still, um, if you have any RFC 1918 uh, um, ciders in your security groups, that's bad. So this means if you're allowing access from 10 slash, and you're an EC2 classic, you're not yet in VPC, what you're actually allowing is any other Amazon customer that's in that same data center, that same region, can access those instances. Uh, and that's not something that Amazon uh, necessarily tells you in the console, and so Security Monkey will bring that up and you wanna avoid that all, at all costs. Uh, this next one is for S3, and so this is the, the buckets. Uh, there's different technologies that protect the permissions on S3 buckets, and it's actually kind of confusing. You have an ACL, you have a policy, the IAM objects that are interacting with these buckets, they have their own policies, and then there's actual object permissions as well. Um, one of the big things that we've seen uh, is uh, the ACL will have something called authenticated users, which sounds great, they're authenticated. It means anyone with an Amazon ac account. Um, so don't have any sensitive files in S3 bucket protected by authenticated users. I think the next thing I'm gonna spend a minute uh, railing against is not action. And so in security, we wanna have white lists of what, things, of what people can do. We don't wanna have a blacklist and say you can't do this, but you can do anything else. And so where I've seen this used, people will say not action, and the one action provided will be I am start. And that's great. You're disallowing them from creating users, um, from uh, um, uh, uh, making themselves an admin. But there's so much else they can still do. They can mess with your cloud tool, your HSMs. Um, and so we definitely flag on not action. This is a, a poor security practice, I think, to have, uh, um, to re simply rely on a uh, blacklist. Uh, anytime there's a condition in an IAM policy, those can get pretty complex. I wish Security Monkey had the logic to parse them and say this is okay and that one's not okay. It does not. Uh, so it will flag on any condition and a human needs to review that. There was a nifty bug in the console a little while ago. You could put spaces in your IAM policy, and then you could put your action after all those spaces, and if you're looking at the, the console on a Mac, you wouldn't see scroll bars, you would just see like the IAM star would be off the screen until you scrolled over there. Maybe that's kind of a silly bug, but uh, Security Monkey will find that. Um, it'll also find anyone who has uh, IAM permissions, um, uh, maybe buried in the list of other permissions as well. We saw the unrotated access keys was alerted on. Um, an ELB is a load balancer uh, in uh, AWS, and any anytime there's a load balancer that's inter internet accessible, we like to flag. Maybe that's intentional. A lot of the site is, is intended to be uh, spun up um, and be internet accessible, but if it's launched in EC2 Classic, uh, then they are internet accessible, and a lot of people don't realize that by default, and there's no way to make them private. Um, in VPC, you have the option, and you wanna make sure your developers are choosing the right option for their application. So always just look at uh, uh, your internet accessible ELBs to make sure that they, they're supposed to be. Um, so we mentioned it does some uh, uh, um, 
uh, SSL checks. And so this is the cert size, the uh, signing algorithm, uh, which protocols they're using, if it's SSL v3, uh, do you use a custom cipher set, do you use a reference policy? Uh, there's some best practices here, and Security Monkey has a lot of things now. Large port ranges. Um, and I think the one, one of the other favorite ones here is Security Monkey, you put in all of your accounts. And so it knows all your account numbers. It, um, we put in all of the Amazon support accounts as well. And so if there is something that has access that is not on the list that Security Monkey knows about, uh, it'll flag it as unknown cross-account access. There's also the, the third-party friendly access and the your own accounts access. Um, Whenever there is unknown cross-account access, you should be very, very leery. You should in investigate that. You'll likely have to file a ticket with Amazon to figure out who owns that and hope it's okay. Um, don't have any unknown cross-account access. Identify every cross-account uh, um, uh, uh, that you have. Um, and so if you're going to the console, I think I, I said at the beginning, you log in to a single account and then you choose your technology, and then you go down into a region, and then you can see the items there. Uh, Security Monkey uh, makes it so that you can just search whichever regions, this is autocomplete, whichever technologies, whatever accounts, you can filter by name, and you can even come down here and search the actual contents. And so uh, let's say you don't know what IAM user you're looking for, but you have an access key, you can just put that in the search config box, and it'll pop up. And if it's no longer there, maybe it's been deleted, you just uh, uh, change it from looking at items to historical revisions, and it'll find that. Here's a couple use cases. And so oftentimes, Security Monkey is read-only. Um, so we use other tools as well in conjunction with Security Monkey. So the kind of things that we get, these use cases are somebody will ask us to clone access from one account to another account or from one region to another region. Security Monkey allows you to go in and see the differences between those two so you can see if they need to be synced um, or if it doesn't even exist in one region. We then use uh, a number of, of scripts that we've written that maybe we'll open source at one point that'll help you uh, push out these changes and sync them in those different environments. Okay, so here's uh, uh, a screenshot of the, the larger view. Uh, we don't have a UI staff on team like some of the vendors do, um, but I think it's pretty good. Uh, so you can select a couple of different items. Here we have two different IAM users. One is, is in red, so it uh, uh, has a higher score. The other one's in yellow, so it's also something wrong with it, maybe. Um, but you want to see what the difference is between the two. And these are two different accounts. And so you can just select the two and hit compare. And so I think that's pretty awesome. That's a newer feature. Okay, so we're open source. Um, it's being used uh, a number of places. We're accepting pull requests. Uh, we're constantly adding new checks and new technologies. Um, I think we're ready for questions. Don't forget to go to uh, Kevin's talk after lunch. Is that on? Oh, I've got stickers up here. Security monkey, scumbler, security grouper, so in the lunchbox. So I have two questions. You mentioned a lot about how you're analyzing or monitoring the policies that are already in place. Um, what are your thoughts on all the new tools coming out to federate access to IAM in the first place? And then the second, um, what's uh, the biggest feature you'd like to see in IAM that doesn't exist today? Sure, um, that's excellent. So I, I think a big part of the coin, uh, Coinbase uh, um, uh, idea is that everything is focused around a user. You have user policy variables, right? Um, and so everything at Netflix is focused around the application. Uh, all of our tools for deploying, everything's around the application. And so all of our IAM, it's IAM roles that are based, they're named after the application. Um, could you repeat the rest of that question? I have the worst ADD in the world, I apologize. Yeah. Oh, yes. Sure. Uh, so as part of our drive to get rid of IAM users, we had to use uh, some kind of federated access. And I think they're great. They provide uh, multi-factor authentication. Um, they make it so you have a lot fewer uh, accounts that you have to monitor. Instead of having an IAM user account for every employee, um, you have uh, uh, different levels of employee. And so uh, you can uh, uh, keep track of those and audit them a lot more uh, easily. Um, I noticed yours uh, relies a lot on IAM policy variables. 
Uh, and those don't work so well um, for um, uh, IAM roles. There's really nothing that we've been able to use. Uh, I, I think as managed policies were recently announced, one of the really neat things, uh, once they increase the limit that you can have, uh, we could have uh, um, uh, similar to your IAM groups, we could have a base policy for some read-only EC2 access. Uh, and then some uh, EC2 access that's a little bit uh, uh, more powerful than that. And so I think once they increase those limits, increase the sizes, um, I think that'll be uh, a huge feature for IAM. Um, I, I was thinking uh, uh, more policy variables uh, and, uh, and larger limits. I think also the ability to have an ARN on our security group. That would be pretty huge. So um, I work for a company that is uh, on Amazon and for some legacy reasons uh, have a lot of things on Google Compute Engine. I was curious, do you think the architecture of Security Monkey is such that if we could find the APIs to plug into, it would be easy to kind of move it towards that realm of being able to do that stuff? Like how generically was it created or is it pretty specific to Amazon? Uh, it's generic. Uh, and so it's using Bodo. Bodo also uh, can talk to the Google APIs. Um, I, I think all the checks right now, you can simply write new checks for Google. We haven't done that yet. Uh, sure. uh, but I, I, it should not be too difficult and I'd love to have a pull request for that. A lot of people yeah. have talked about that before. I, I could definitely see us doing something like that. So um, Awesome. Yeah, that'd be cool. Thank you. Hi, uh, I was wondering, are you planning an integration with Lambda at any point of time, or do you want uh, to go the cloud flirt integration, or how do you want to do that? Um, I would love to do that. I haven't experimented with it. Uh, I really think a lot of that is the future. Um, I think a lot of the, the difficulty people have when they're setting up Security Monkey is uh, getting a, a server that has the latest OS and patching the OS and then installing this Python stuff. If you're not a developer, if you're not confident uh, in with using the command line, a lot of that can be very difficult. And I think if you just used Lambda, it would uh, abstract away so much of that difficulty. That's what I was wondering. Yeah, yeah, right now we don't have any development, but I'd love to. I mean, we've talked about that. We've had, uh, we have issues open where we want to play with it. Uh, it just hasn't happened yet. Did I mention there's a stickers? Oh. oh, okay. Thought somebody took the whole lunchbox. Okay, thank you.